Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Fabric 1.21 and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can render some items inside of your block entity renderer. Let's go ahead and get started. So needless to say this tutorial will require the previous tutorial on block entity renderers and it's also going to re require most of the block entity tutorials before that so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started so i'm going to be using the exact same model we had in the previous tutorial i have edited it though so as you can see in the game here if i open it and you look inside you can see i now have an empty space inside of this model and that's because we're going to go ahead and render all of the items that are actually stored inside of this chest model and hopefully this should be relatively easy to do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close the game there and I'm just going to minimize the console. So I'm first going to show you how you can just render a normal item. And then we'll go ahead and create some logic to render all of them in different locations and rotations and all those kind of things. So it's pretty simple to render an item. But the first thing we will need to do is get hold of this context here from our constructor. And that's because this context allows us to grab a bunch of different things. For example, the item renderer. This is where we will get our item renderer from. So let's make this as a field. So we're going to go private, final, and we want the context. I'm just going to call that the context. And then I'm going to just set that in the constructor. Then we can come ahead into our render method. And I'm just going to do this before it renders the model. You can choose to do it afterwards if you wish. But I'm going to do it before it renders the model. And all I'm going to do is I'm first going to actually say if the chest is actually open because if the chest is not open then there's no point us rendering anything so we want to try and save on kind of computing gpu power as much as we can so we're going to say if entity dot lid angle is greater than and you may think you can do greater than zero however you'll probably find that that won't work since we are converting a double to a float so it's going to have some uh, precision issues as we found out in the previous tutorial so i'm just going to add a little buffer there i'm going to say if it's greater than 0 0.1 then we're going to render it then i'm just going to go ahead and actually grab our inventory so i'm going to say simple inventory inventory is equal entity dot get inventory which is a method that we created to grab our inventory there then i'm also going to go ahead and grab the world from the block entity and um, so i'm going to say world world is equal entity dot get world then all we need to go to do to go ahead and render an item is to say this dot context and we're going to get the item renderer and then we're going to call render item you see there are a few variations of these and the one that we're going to be using is this one in the middle here that has a seed at the end and starts with an item stack so we can just pass in the stack that we want but now i'm just going to say inventory dot get stack in the first slot so that will get us the first stack then it wants the actual type of transformation that it should apply so if we go transformation so model transformation mode you'll see there are a bunch of different modes that you can choose to render it as generally the one you're going to want to use is just fixed because that's the one that kind of would be shown as um, an actual item there then the next thing it is going to want as you can see here will be the light and then the overlay so we're going to pass in the light, which is one of our parameters, then the overlay, then it wants the matrices, and then it wants the vertex consumers. And then it also wants the world, which we created as a variable here. And then it also wants a rendering seed, which we're just going to give it zero since it's not really that important. So once we've done that, we can actually now run the game and we should be able to see what this actually will do. And hopefully it should just basically render whatever item is in the first slot at the position of the chest. And you see this might not be exactly where we want it to be. So we might have to go ahead and fix that. So if I now go ahead and open the chest, you'll see that nothing is actually rendered because I don't have anything in the first slot and I've just put some random items in here already. So if I now look at that, you'll see that we now have a soul campfire rendered. However, it's a bit big, so we're going to make it smaller. So we're going to say matrices and we're going to push. And then we're also going to say matrices.scale and I'm just gonna scale by maybe 
325 so 0 0.325 and then 0 0.325 and then we need to obviously pop that otherwise that's going to cause us an issue so we're going to pop and then if we hot swap that and we look again you can now see that it is there um, however it is a bit small so we're probably also going to want to go ahead and translate that so matrices.translate we're going to do zero on the x we're going to do maybe 0.5 on the y and zero on the z and if we do that we can now see we have the campfire rendered in the middle and it's only going to be rendered when the lid is actually open um so if i like go into this you can see it's not actually rendered now because it doesn't need to be rendered when it's not open and that will then get rendered once it is open that's pretty good but we want all of our items to be rendered so how can we do that well this is fairly simple and we are actually going to have to close the game for this one as well so basically instead of just rendering this singular item we're just going to loop through the inventory and render all of them so let's do that so let's say inventory dot get held stacks and i'm just going to do a for i loop on those and then going to grab the item stack at that index so item stack stack is equal inventory dot get stack at the index then i'm going to say if the stack is empty then i'm just going to continue because we don't want to render an empty stack there's no need to do any processing for that at all then we can just do any transformation we want so we can once again go ahead and render that so we can call the render method which will be exactly the same and it will then render that stack we also however need to do some transformations so what we can do here is we can keep this translate i'm actually going to go ahead and remove the scale because we're going to do the scaling separately and the reason we're going to do the scaling separately is because if we want to translate these all randomly then without them affecting each other we actually have to push and pop again so we have to push in here and we have to pop in here meaning that each translation won't be applied to the next translation so that also means that in order to translate we are going to have to scale after we translate otherwise our translation when we try to translate it will be based on the new local space of the scale that we've applied to it so you always want to try and translate first and then you can scale and then you can rotate or you can translate rotate and then scale just note that obviously anything you do after scaling it is going to be affected likewise with rotations if we rotated first and then translated then the translation is going to be affected by whatever is now the x-axis or whatever is now the y-axis or the z-axis so you've got to be careful with the order that you apply your transformations we're going to be translating scaling and then rotating in ours so what we're going to do is we're going to get a random x and z value within our chest now i'm going to go ahead and do this actually in a static context and the reason i'm going to do that um kind of statically is because otherwise these random values will be recalculated every single time that we call our render method so every single frame the position would change which isn't what we want so we need to go ahead and pre-calculate these positions and also the rotation as well so what i'm going to do is and this is a little bit kind of janky it's not going to look great in terms of the code but this will work fine so we're just going to stick with this so we're going to have a private static final and this is going to be a list of type number array this array is going to basically have the position of the x as the first index then it's going to have the position of the z as the second index and those will both be doubles and then for the rotation that'll be an integer between 0 and 360 that will be at the third position so i'm just going to call this the transformations and obviously you could create a record or a class for this instead if you didn't want to use an array i'd actually recommend that if you uh, wanted to do that in fact you know what? we can do that that's fine we can do that so let's create a public record and this is going to be called the item transformation and then we can take a double x we can take a double z and then we can take an int rotation and then what we can do is just make this a list of 
item transformations which is going to be equal to a new array list and then inside of the static init we can go ahead and initialize this so we can get our random first so random random is equal thread local random dot current that just gets us a quick random there and then we can do a for i loop now we have 36 slots so we're going to do less than 36 and all we're going to say is transformations dot add and we're first going to do the x so we're going to say random dot next double and we're going to negative 0.5 so because our item is rendered in the middle we need to go ahead and minus 0.5 so that this will be between negative 0.5 and 0.5 and then i'm going to multiply this value by 0.5 four three seven five and the reason i'm multiplying it by that value specifically that will exclude the final pixel so if you do one divided by 16 because there's 16 pixels in a block right then you will get the value of 0 0.0625 so basically what we're saying here is that we know that 0 0.5 will be the think of it like a radius right except it's obviously not a circle so it's half the width right so it's width divided by two so what we're saying is that because we want that final one pixel ignored from our calculation we need to do 0.5 minus one divided by 16 which gives us the 0 0.4375 that we have gone ahead and multiplied it by so this will basically now be in a range of negative 0 0.4375 to positive 0 0.4375 and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the z value as well and then we're also going to need to do the rotation and i'm just going to say random.next int and so that will take in a value of 360 and obviously we need to wrap this in a new item transformation then what we can do inside of our rendering down here we can go ahead and grab our transformation so we can create an item transformation transformation is going to be equal to transformations.get and we're going to get that by the slot index so we're first going to apply the translation which will be matrices.translate and we're going to do transformation.x and then we're going to do zero for the y and then transformation.z then we're going to go ahead and scale it after that. So we're going to do matrices.scale. The number that I found to be pretty good here is 0.325. But I'm going to plug that in for all three of these. And then we're going to apply a random rotation as well. Now the rotation that we're going to be doing is on the Y axis. So I'm going to do matrices.multiply. And we're going to say rotation axis dot positive Y. And we're going to do rotation degrees, which will take in the transformation dot rotation and then as long as we are popping our matrices here and we're popping our matrices for the translation as well um, in fact you don't actually need to have this transformation up here you could just plug 0.5 into here directly uh, we'll do that actually it doesn't really matter which we decide to do uh, but we'll do that instead and then all we need to do is go ahead and run it and then we can test if this works or not so let's run the game and we're going to run in debug mode just in case we need to make any quick changes and we'll see if it works so inside of the game if we now go ahead and open our chest we can see that the items are all rendered completely randomly in different positions and obviously if we move them around you see that they will go to then different positions in that chest they're all going to render in different positions depending on the slot it would be nice i guess if we had a button in here that could randomize the items in there that'd be pretty cool actually we could do something like that and then obviously it'd be easier to test the random positions as well and obviously this would work with any of them but you see that as that starts to close these items are not going to be rendered anymore you can actually see them pop out there um, when that lid gets closed enough which is pretty neat um, but that's it for this tutorial so i hope you guys found it useful uh, if you did please do be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you have any problems feel free to join the discord which is linked down below and in the next tutorial we'll probably be covering storing some fluids inside of our block entity because i think that's a very cool thing that we can do and it's quite easy to do as well so i'm quite excited for that and um i will definitely see you very shortly for that tutorial but yeah i will see you in the next tutorial good bye